Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sudanshu Mani, and I am a railway man for life. I will begin with a question. We are living in Amrit Kal, a decisive period of next twenty-five years, and sometime in these twenty-five years, how many of you think that India is going to be a developed country? yes so it's not a question of if it's a question of when a developed country with inclusive growth with fruits of developing development reaching the commonest poorest man of the country a country rising from its sh shadows of its past to claim a place with a global profile in the committee of nations indian railway stories began when we were colonized by the british started as a means to control and subjugate india but a spin off benefit was that the vast distances of the country were truncated there was more interaction people to people meetings and gandhi ji used it as a great tool to instill the spirit of freedom in us and our eventual independence and after that a period of growth to which the railways contributed there is a lot of romance associated with indian railways you would all remember the scramble for that window seat as the marvel the magic the wonder of indian railway and india as a whole passes you by it cannot fail to touch anyone love it or hate it it is not something you can ignore but today is it relevant this romance yes it is because it carries 8.5 billion people in a year which is like everybody on earth travels railways once railways are by far the cleanest and the greenest mode of transport 16 to 18 of green transport as compared to ro road and rail so there is no way but to have a developed railway uh the share in freight has gone down a lot of people travel by the railways but is it really at the springboard for this quantum of growth that we are looking at or is it merely trying to instead of being a driver ride on the india growth story that's the question today as i said we are in amrit kal and i recall these wonderful words of the people's president apj abdul kalam the dream is not the thing that you see in sleep but is that thing that doesn't let you sleep are the people in indian railways that sleepless to propel india on a path of inclusive growth and prosperity and happiness and well being well i have some thing to add to that but i recall the words of uh, porsia from the merchant of venice when she says that if to do were as easy as to know what were good to do chapels had been churches and poor man's cottages princesses palaces in the same way it's not my place to come and lecture about it but i will try to put before you certain things which i have been able to do with my team and certain things which i think can be done proof of the pudding as you can call it the current state of railway is nothing much to write home about poor operating ratio expenses exceeding the revenue no surpluses still investment into railways have gone up by as you can see in this graph on the right hand side by uh five six times that's because the government believes that railways are necessary and it should not be viewed in isolation but 
Growth in railways also means growth in manufacturing services, more tax revenue for the government and so on. So, it's a part of the growth of the country as such. Nevertheless, it should generate its own surplus. Karz ki peete the mein aur yeh samajhte the ki haan rang laegi hamari faqa masti ek din. I'll translate it for you. It means I used to drink with borrowed money in the belief that this profligacy would bring in prosperity. Well, it won't. So there are certain measures which are needed for railways to generate their own surplus and be an active participant in this growth of the country. First, a good story. The image and the recall of Indian Railways trains had not changed for decades and decades. When a team of dreamers in Integral Coach Factory of Chennai, which I was fortunate enough to lead, thought something to thought to do something about it, and from scratch, from concept to design to engineer to manufacture to validate to test, they brought in what was known as Train 18 and later Vande Bharat Express. This became a train which was loved by all Indians. Travelers, non-travelers alike, even people who didn't travel by trains, as something that Indians had done for themselves totally on their own. And today, as you see these pictures, a word about the Prime Minister who's there to launch each and every train. He captures it well when he says that this train represents the spirit of aspirational and resurgent India. And ladies and gentlemen, what you see on the screen is becoming slowly a common sight on most of our trains with two of them together and so on. If this is not transformation, what is? But is that enough? No, we have to develop tracks to match the train, equip these trains and other trains with a wonderfully developed indigenous technology of signaling called Kavach. So that the full potential of the train to run at 160 and later 180 kilometers per hour is realized. We have to make sleeper version of the train so that distances between say Delhi, Mumbai, Delhi, Howrah can be made truly overnight by this train. We have to make aluminium version of the train which is lighter, greener, less, more energy efficient. Aluminium Vande Bharat's crisscrossing the railways. India all over, more than 500 of them in near future is something which is a vision which can be realized. And a word about high speed trains, as you know, after long delays and procrastination, a high speed train is going to come between Ahmedabad and Mumbai. We need more and more of these trains with 300 to 350 kilometers per hour speed and average speed of say around uh, 200 kilometers per hour. This will be something which will in a way kill air traffic, which is good for environment. And Vande Bharat, 200 km Vande Bharat is going to compete with air traffic, which is again very good for environment. Uh, with one caveat that these high speed trains, in my opinion, should come in broad gauge, not standard gauge, so that at the city level, it can integrate with Indian railway system. A word about what do we need, all of us, not railways. I will tell you three things. One is we are stuck between mindlessly being global or hopelessly being local. The truth is somewhere being near being local. And because if you import technology, it is like, uh, if I can say it poetically, Mere sher aay na khane mein teri beshumar adaon ke Magar aisi bhi koi hai koi ada Jo rahegi sina e raaz mein Meaning I can go poetic about your beauty But there are some aspects of your elegance Which will remain buried in the recesses of my heart You are not going to get access to that Or we all need restlessness ladies and gentlemen To achieve peace Shajar hajar ka jumud hasti payam ibrat hai ghafilon ko jise talash suku nahi hai bala wo kya beqarar hoga unless you are restless you cannot get peace and the last thing we were talking about success and 
it was very nicely defined by her but i also say success is in giving your best your commitment your passion your hard work your everything outcome is not in your hands if you have given these things you have succeeded and that is the spirit with which you have to work create your own because ownership and pride can always make you do 110 120% more than what you are otherwise capable of in this talk about vande bharat and high speed trains are we going to forget the common man of india are they still going to travel like cattle in a developed country no we have to take care of these people who have less money in their pocket but if we are going to be developed they are going to have 3 4 times real value money in their pockets give them that benefit today make all trains air conditioned they may not be able to afford it to today so don't increase the price make it maybe a little bit cramped but give that comfort and with comfort you give dignity to them it's very important